M-M-E. Good morning, church family, visitors, and friends. I would like to welcome you to this second Sunday in the year of 2021 to the praise and worship celebration of Mount Moriah East Baptist Church, where our anointed pastor, the Reverend Dr. Melvin Charles Smith, will deliver to us a message of love that will encourage our hearts and bless our souls. Before we begin, please make note of the January upcoming ministry events. On the third Sunday of January, we will be honoring our pastor on his birthday with a card shower. Please drop your cards off at the church on Saturday, January the 16th, between the hours of 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. And if you can't make it then, send them through the mail. Now, even though we're apart, we still want to celebrate the accomplishments of the membership. If you've received a promotion, you celebrated an anniversary, received a recognition in academia, or a milestone in your life that you're proud of. Please submit that information to media.mmebc at gmail.com and it will be posted to Facebook on our Facebook page every last Friday of the month. Lastly, but equally as important, let us honor the Word of God where it tells us to bring our tithes and offerings into the storehouse of the Lord. We recognize that we're not in the sanctuary, but the work and the expenses of the church continues. Please utilize Cash App, PayPal, call the church office to have a deacon come by and pick up your offering or drop it off at the church. Now let us enter the sanctuary with our pastor. Be blessed.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. How many are just happy to be alive this morning? Hallelujah. Because of the gift of life, we know that God is faithful to us and he never, never slacks in his promise. Hallelujah. An old song of the church that says, great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Dennis. Greetings, blessings, and welcome to the family of Mount Moriah East. Those of you who are sharing with us this morning, our faithful viewers, thank you for being a part of the Mount Moriah East family. And to the beautiful members of Mount Moriah East, special blessings to each of you with a prayer that all is well. Thank you for this day that God has given us for you to share with us. And we thank God for this day he has blessed us with. Our chairman and to the three people who are in the building, we thank God for you this morning. Matthew 6 and 33 says it like this. Set your mind on God's kingdom and his justice before everything and all the rest will come to you as well. Let us pray. Dear Lord our God, in the holy name of Christ our Savior, we seek this morning your forgiveness. As we have fallen short of your word, your way, and your will, we pray now for your forgiving spirit upon us. Thank you, dear Lord, as we gather in your presence, and as we gather together in distance, unify us in spirit. Bless us to be together while we are not physically together. In times like this, dear Lord, from wherever we are, you are our refuge. In the turbulence of the storms of life, you are rescuing us. You are relieving us of our burden, and you are receiving us in your care. Bless now, dear Lord, as only you can, and we'll give all glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, let us say amen. From the book of Micah, the sixth chapter and the very popular eight verse, he had showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. On this Sunday morning, I'd like to speak from this theme, a solution to save our society. A solution to save our society. On January 6, 2021, while many of us were still saying Happy New Year to each other, giving them our blessings for a great new 2021, while wishing these great things upon each other. We also witness the chaos in our nation's capital. We saw what was the attempt to destroy democracy. Not only did we here in America see this, the world looked upon us as we have been before the greatest nation on earth, as they looked upon us, they looked with shame and saw something in America that had never been seen before. Not only that, but our youth, to whom we try to teach obedience, to steer from disobedience, we saw, they saw acts of things contrary to our teaching of right and wrong. We saw something very different, very chaotic, and in need of God's blessing. As we saw the events of January 6, 2021, 
We remember the events of June 2020 and saw that there was a difference between June 2020 and January 2021. We saw a difference in the equity or rather inequity of the response. In 2020 we saw leaders stand against but in 2021, we saw leaders standing with. The universal question of all of this is why? Then we receive unsound answers. Answers that are designed to justify rather than respond rightly. We also have the universal question of how, how did this happen? And we receive the additional unsound answers that seems not to give good news or good answer to our question. However, in the midst of all of this, however we look at everything that has happened, there is a solution to save our society. This solution was given centuries ago from God through Micah the prophet. When the world seemed to stand on the brink of being judged by God. And people were anxious to know which way to go. God gives them an answer. And the answer is just do just that. Love mercy and walk humbly with thy God. May I say today, this same solution is very applicable, necessary, useful, and is the answer in 2021. The solution is not philosophical, for we have witnessed the irrationality of our human thinking. The solution is not psychological. For we have observed very negative and continuous indifferent action. The solution is theological. For it is God's word to us. It is God's directions for our relationships one with another. So here today, the word of Micah says to us, hear what he is saying. Our world today is as it was in Michael's time, in need of saving. There was a very corrupt nature that existed in the land. There was a lot of yielding to temptation. They had become weary of God's service. Man wanted to obey himself rather than follow the precepts, the mandates, and the judgments of God. And, 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 and they wanted to return to a world even though they had made a covenant with God. God said, I will be your God, you will be my people. But the covenant was broken not by God, but by the waywardness of his people. God wanted the society then to know that there is a solution to save them. And the solution then, as it is in 2021, is not an unreasonable one. God is not going to ask us to do anything beyond our ability to perform his desires for us. So God wanted Israel to know that they could do this and they wanted to know what is it that we are to do. Do you want us to get better by bringing burnt offerings? Do you want us to get better by practicing greater customs? Do you want us to get better 
by the sacrifices that we can make that are tangible. Do you want us to get better by the blood of goats that will please you and save our society? God had them to know none of these things are required of you. And it reminds me of where we are in 2021. Uh, we are looking at the elevation of our world by more conferences. Do we meet more to save our society? Do we have more workshops to save our society? Do we have more diversity classes to save our society? Do we have more external activities? Do we present more legislation? Well, I say to the land to which we live in, as God said to Micah, no, these are not the ways to which we can save our society. No, no conference, no meeting, no workshop is going to bring us together. Had that been the case, we would have been brought together earlier. But the solution, the solution is not anything external. It's going to come internal. 2021 solution is revealed not only from man's way of thinking, but theologically from God's word. Because if you look at our limited wisdom, our limited knowledge, our limited intellect, there's a way that seems right to us, but it's a way that leads us down a dangerous path. And we're living in a time when men believe deep in their heart that they are right. Deep in their spirit, they are right. Deep in their conviction, they are right. But in reality, they are completely wrong. Therefore, we are not able to trust the human intellect for the answer. We are not able to trust man to give us a solution. We are not able to put it in his hands. But there is a power who's given us a solution. And if we put this in practice, God will help heal the land. The word of God comes to us presented in the solution in a three-part manner. And if used, if applied, if understood, it will save our society. First of all, God says, provide justice. Israel was filled with many acts of injustice. Just as you and I experience here in 2021. Someone said that 2020 got dressed up and came back as 2021. For injustice still reigns in the land. May I say today, if justice means peace, if justice means respect one to another, if justice means fairness, and if justice means equality, we are missing injustice in our land. I understand and agree with Aristotle when he says justice lives in our soul and that it is true in action. As we observe our beautiful land, it is absent from us today. Jesus on justice in Matthew 7 and 12 says it like this, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I'm of the opinion that everything that people lash out on each other, they do not wish 
for it to come back on themselves. For every hit one makes to another, I'm sure they will duck and dodge if a hit comes back to them. So whatsoever you want other people to do to you, do you also unto them. It was taught early as what we call the golden rule. Here in this world, there, there's a lot of conversation about social justice. Social justice is just the proper distribution of everything. The equal privileges of everything. And the open opportunities of everything. I believe it goes something like this. If we are working in the same profession, we ought to get the same pay. Uh, it doesn't matter what zip code we live in. Doesn't matter whether we are male or female. Doesn't matter our skin color. But it's the capability, the ability to do the same work in draw the same profession, then the same compensation ought to be given. Uh, I don't think it's fair for another brother to make $5,000 a week. And we're doing the same thing with the same talent. And my check is only $500 a week. I think social justice should come and reign in the land. God is not asking us for anything unreasonable. He's not asking us for anything unfair. He's not saying that I can go and take part of your $5,000. Just let me have my own $5,000. Let it be equitable everywhere. So therefore, the solution comes from God to Micah in the day just as it is to us in 2021. Just provide justice. Just be just to everybody. Just be fair to everybody. Just be right to everybody. Not only that, but uh, God goes on to say to Micah, love mercy. Didn't say anything about tolerating mercy. Love mercy. Mercy is an exhibition of kindness. Mercy is an exhibition of compassion. Mercy is an exhibition of our understanding. When God elevates us, raises us to a higher level, let us be merciful and reach out and try to help another. Everybody does not get the same opportunity always, does not have the same academic level, but when you get there, bring another up as far as they can go. So there, or love, mercy. Proverbs says it like this in the 11th chapter and 7th verse, the merciful man do it good to his own soul. In other words, when we show mercy to somebody else, we are being blessed by God in our own soul. For God sees everything we do. He hears everything we say. He knows every motive of our spirit. So be merciful because if you're merciful, God will remember you. And I got a feeling that every now and then, all of us are going to need God's mercy in our own lives, no matter where we are. I don't know what's going on, but I heard many people, they didn't hear, give a long prayer. Conditions didn't allow them to say the parts of prayer. But they said, Lord, have mercy. So I'm of the opinion that you and I, as we travel this journey, every now and then, will need God's mercy in our own lives. So therefore, we are obligated. We are mandated. 
to be merciful to our fellow man. Somebody shout glory. Matthew 5 and 7 said, Blessed are the merciful, but they shall, good God Almighty, obtain mercy. Ain't God all right? So blessed means happy. And if you want to be happy, if you want to have joy, you let mercy reign in your spirit for somebody else. Glory to the power of God. God wants us to have positive relationships. Jesus had taught us to love one another. And as Micah was in his day, so it is in our day. There's too much selfishness, too much meism, too much I got mine. We ought to be able to have mercy and share with somebody else. If we want to travel far in life, if we want to go high in life, we ought to have mercy on somebody else. And God will surely remember us. Glory to the name of God. Well, God kept on talking and gave another thing to Micah. He said, not only do justice, not only love mercy, but then walk humbly with your God, meaning God Jehovah, God Yahweh, God the Creator, and God the Recreator through Jesus Christ. And if our walk is our conduct, then we walk not hardy with our head in the cloud, but we walk humbly. Somebody shout glory. We don't walk with hostility. Too many of us get up in the morning with a chip on our shoulder to be mean and low down, hostile and cruel to everybody we meet. But God requires humility. He does not want us to get up with hate in our heart because you don't know what he, you need from him during the course of the day. So you get up with the spirit of humility. Somebody shout glory. Humility are the ways of Jesus in order to be in the spirit of humility, you must have salvation. Salvation is really required for you to walk humbly with God. Ain't God all right? Somebody shout glory. To walk humbly is to be strong, but not bold. Quiet, but not speechless. Sure but not arrogant. Somebody said, glory. Shakespeare says it. I'm thankful for my humility. In other words, he understood Romans 12 and 3. Don't think too highly of yourself more than you ought to. Yes, we ought to be proud of ourselves. Live where we feel. Live proud of ourselves. Love ourselves. But not with a stiff neck. Not with looking down on others. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. God <laughs> deals with an equitable spirit. God is a judge of humanity. And God wants all of us to be right one to another. Somebody shout glory. In our society in 2021 stands in the need of saving. We are suffering from a moral disease. Somebody shout glory. 
is a deadly disease. We call it sin. And it's claimed in a whole lot of souls. It's a universal disease. And it's touching everywhere. There is no place you can find where sin is not there. Glory is a hopeless disease. For man can't cure himself. Only God has the power. Glory, glory, glory to an almighty God. God has a solution. He said justice. Treat everybody right. He said have mercy. Do it out of love. He said walk with me and walk humbly with me. Enoch did it and look what happened to him. Abraham did it and look what happened to him. Job did it and look what happened to him. If you and I walk humbly before God, God will help save us and help save our society. Somebody shout glory. 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 As the word of God was to Micah, so it is to you and me today. Micah was dealing with Jerusalem. Micah was dealing with Samaria. The word judgment was being tossed around and they wanted to know how to not be judged and get God's judgment. He just told them that justice, mercy, and humility will keep it off of you. And in 2021, the same thing applies to you and me. Yes, it does. Yes, it will. Jesus, the Son of God, came down in this world to save us of our sins, to know how to execute justice, to know how to do mercy, and to know how to walk with the Lord. Glory, glory, glory to God Almighty. If we remember January the 6th, and you don't want it to happen again, God has a good solution to save our society. It's not in man. It's not in legislation. It's in the power of Jesus Christ to obey the word of God. Somebody shout glory. Won't it take care of you? Won't it raise you up? Won't it lift you higher? Glory! Glory! Glory to an almighty God. We have the solution. Use what God has given us. Christ has died to save us. That we have an abundant life. Use a proven solution. We're fooling around at all these makeshift things that don't work. That don't work. Use what God said. It will work. Let us pray. Father God, it is again before thy holiness we come. Thanksgiving in our heart for this day and our time. We thank you for life. And we pray, oh God, that you would allow us to invoke your solutions into life. That we might live it without your judgment upon us. That your hand will continuously lead and guide us and uphold us. Walk with us as we maze through this mean and difficult time. Bless everyone. Bless our land. Bless our world. Keep us and we 
shall be kept. Give to you all glory, honor, and praise. Receive this prayer. We stand before you today with heavy hearts. We stand before you with confused minds. But we stand before you full of faith, believing that your solution is going to make life better and going to save our society. Receive this your servant's prayer. In Jesus' name, let us say amen. On this day, wherever you are, we invite you to join with us each Sunday morning. And if you're outside of the Ark of Safety without a church home, we encourage you to find a church, find a preacher, find people who will love you, embrace you, give you the truth, and it shall set you free. Find that place, let it be an oasis in your life, let it be an oasis in your spirit, let it be a part of the movement to a higher and greater level. So we ask that you find that place. We say to the members of Mount Rice, wherever you are today, continue your hand in the hand of our God. Jesus has come to give us life and to give it more abundantly. Let us move to live like he wants us to live. So I ask that you pray one for another. Pray for yourselves, obviously. Pray for our broken land. That God will heal our land. Thank you this morning for tuning into our worship service. Remember there are ways on Facebook to check out church activities, our multi-ministry services. I want to thank our chairman for yesterday's feeding of more than 400 families, blessing our community, blessing the young men with work, cleaning up the community and making it better, putting money in their pockets, giving them some pride and self-esteem. So we continue to do the work even though our doors are closed. We continue to do the work that God has assigned unto us. To Mount Moriah East members, please know that we need your financial support. There are multiple ways for your contribution. Please see our social pages, social media pages, our church correspondence for ways to hear and how to be a blessing to the church. Lastly, remember to follow the health and safety guidelines of CDC and Shelby County Health Department, uh, Health Commission. Health Department Commission has issued new safety, stay at home orders. We encourage everyone to as much as possible stay in. Wear your mask, sanitize your hand, be distant but yet be in love. Let us live through this. Let us keep our mask. I know you want to reach out and say things to others, but they can hear you through the mask. I wanted to take it off long enough to preach, but otherwise it would be back on. So blessings to each of you, and may God hold you in his care, hide you from doubt and fear. Let us stand for the closing prayer. Father God, again, you have been in our midst. But Lord, we thank you for letting us be in your midst. For when we're in your midst, we are surrounded by holiness. Holiness to which we cannot create of ourselves. But it can be made better in us because of our closeness and your closeness with us. We ask now, O oh God, that as we go down from this mountain, that you will, as always, keep us in your care. Watch over us. Bless us. Take care of every family today. Many who lost loved ones. Many who are ill. Many who are isolated. Many with a multitude of issues. But you're the God of all comfort. And the word said you will comfort us in all of our tribulations. Bless now. Keep now. And we'll be mindful to give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we do pray. 
And let every heart say amen. Amen and amen. God bless.